Welcome to AL is not sequel. Hey, I'm Eric and uh, BC is on a roll. And when BC is on a roll, you know, all the partners are on a roll and, and new people are coming into the channel and, uh, and new people, consultants and developers and everything. And developers these days come from a lot of different backgrounds and, um, Lots of them comes with SQL background, and, and that's great because Business Central is running on SQL, right? Business Central is a, you know, a SQL application. So, uh, so coming into the channel with knowledge of SQL is a plus. Um, and a lot of conversations lately um, discussing this and, and it's quite inter interesting because the first thing I try to explain is that Business Business Central is not a SQL application. Yeah, we're using SQL. It's like a, a distance uh, tech that lies behind multiple layers of abstraction. Um, but Business Central is not a SQL application. Um, I had a, one conversation where, where you know, we have a on insert trigger, we have on modify trigger and delete trigger, and and you know, if, if somebody comes into the channel, say, huh, I know what that is, right? So when we're inserting a record uh, in SQL, we have a trigger in SQL that triggers a stored procedure, and stuff happens, and you know, that is not the case with Business Central. Uh, yeah, there might be stored procedures, but th there's not a single stored procedure that holds business logic. There's not a single trigger on SQL that will actually trigger business logic. It might be technical stuff and dealing with whatever, uh, but it's not business logic. All what, if you write some code on insert, it's getting executed in the service tier and, and that might result in something SQL-ish at, at the very end. But but Business Central is not working that way. It's not a SQL application. Um, the fact is that Microsoft are spending huge, huge res amounts of resources on you know, translated from whatever we write in AL, which AL was designed for a a non-SQL database, um, and and the whole application was written with the intent of running on a non-SQL database. Then we got SQL at some point, and stuff got massaged. Uh, we changed some table locking mechanism and so on, uh, and and added SQL near features, but the overall structure of how the system is working was designed for a non-SQL database. So Microsoft are using lots of resources to take whatever we come up with in AL and translate and transform that into SQL statements that are as efficient as possible. Uh, and I... I'm sure that if you ask uh, a very specific handful of guys in Lyngby uh, if they could name four or five th things that they would love to get rid of from AL, they could mention it in an instant because we can do stuff in AL that's just making their lives so much more complicated. Uh, like like we can, we can set a filter and do some find next statement, we could change the filters on the fly and, and all sorts of crazy stuff that makes their world way, way more complicated than it had to be. Because what we got, the tool we got AL, we got that in relationship to a totally different database with different options and possibilities. Um, so another thing that also is, is very evident is that we design tables very, very differently than SQL guys, girls, folks, peeps uh, normally do. Um, a, a, a normal table, let me actually show you here. So this, just so that it's not turned into all talk. So here is an item. 
And and an item is a, is a great example because you know we have an item number, and the item number is the primary key. So every table in Business Central has primary key, a, and primary key has to be unique. Um, and in this case, and hundreds of other tables, you know, the primary key, the field type is a code, and a code is a is a fancy uh, fancy text field. That was all uppercase, truncating, white spaces, um, but but in reality it's just a text field. Um, there's a video on on code fields if you want to see that uh, somewhere on the channel. Go subscribe and find that one if you want to know a lot about the code field. Anyway, so the item table is a very typical table. So if we were to create something new in in Business Central, if I were to create something new in Business Central. Um, this is probably the pattern I would go for for creating a new table where it has some sort of primary key that's a code and then you know a description and some other fields and if I need to reference my new table somewhere I reference the the code uh, primary key um, and, and and be aware that you can see that even though it's called number item number it's still a text field so in this case 20 1920 does s so so you can have alphanumeric characters there no problem um but but that that's kind of the pattern um and and if you break that pattern and introduce another pattern you you come up with something that in context and in in the greater scheme of things just look weird and and one of them is actually right here behind my head and i do not mean the the mac oh wow the macintosh no item attributes item attributes is wow that's hard to see here let me see if i can uh, move them there we go how about that item attributes are kind of weird um so we can see that we got item attributes and and we can we can take a look at the attributes and say there's an attribute so that sounds like a code field right so if i go here and i can i can i can what can i do i can do a model year so so but 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 it's not really a code field apparently because it's uppercase lowercase. Um, so what is going on? And and if we go and create new attributes, we can see that now we have a name. Before we had an attribute, now we have a name. So if I create a new one, I give it a name, my attribute, text and well, that's probably fine. So now I have a new one. So I didn't create a code and added a description. I just added a name. Um, what if I add a new one called uh, ABC? So so that is so 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 there's clearly not any sorting going on here right uh so something is something is funky so let's take a look at how this is made behind the scene uh, and actually you can see that i already had that started so here is prism um a tool where you can uh, you can go and, and look look at code um statical prism uh, and we can see that here is the item attribute table, which would be this guy, right? And it has an ID as field number one with auto increment. Um, and we can, let's check the keys and we can see that key one is just the ID field. So here, if we just, turn on the page inspector we can see that the one i just created abc is number eight and the one i just created before is number seven so now we have an auto increment number for 
for an attribute. Uh, and, and, and and that is you know that's very common in 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 SQL, but it's very very weird to have that suddenly in in Business Central, um, and and we get some some weird stuff because clearly I could type. Uh, so in this case, I go back to this one and I can type A B C. So. Let's take a look at the, go back to the fields here and let's take a look at the name field where that is used. Um, and we can see, oh, there's a function called find item attribute case sensitive and find item attribute case insensitive. So let's take a look at that code. Uh, and let's figure out where that is used. So it's used in the validate function, that might be the one we're typing in, could be. Um, so if value is different from something, then find sensitive from attribute, or if there's an option, find insensitive. So this is this is really, really strange from a, not from a SQL perspective, where that, that's okay, now we need to filter and, 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 and do a lookup uh, on a name to find the the ID, um, but it's very un on business central on AL ish, uh, and and in 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 the greater context, this is actually causing a lot of issues uh, because let's say that you you have more than one company and uh, and and you want uh, you you want some sort of uh, the the item the inventory should be the same in different companies and then suddenly something is created before something else it has been typed in in different order and then gets different ids so you start replicating or do intercompany and and it's it's a mess this i i don't mean this video to be a rant in any way but <laughs> Let's call this subsection uh, rent ish uh, because this is this is weird and I I I failed to vision the code review when this was created and somebody saying, huh, that's a good idea. Let's implement um, also and the same thing with uh, you know with with the. Uh, the, the the values and, and stuff like that. Let let's do auto increment on 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 master data entries here because we don't do that anywhere else in the system. So it totally makes sense that we'll do it on item attributes because I I don't I don't get it. Sorry, the, the, this is this is weird. But the point I'm trying to make here, apart from the rent, sorry about the rent, Microsoft. Uh, <laughs> Is that you know, if we took this isolated and 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 you saw this in written for MySQL or written for you know, what whatever, nobody would raise an eyebrow about this. This looks perfectly fine. That's exactly the way you would do it in an application where the data model looks like this. But that's not how our data model looks. Our data model is also totally without. Not totally, but mostly without joints. Uh, we tend to work directly on tables. Um, we have an object type called query, which is a joint, um, or can it's a, it's it's an encapsulated select statement that can have joints in it, uh, which is typically how you use it. But we don't use that very much. Yeah, I use a query once in a while, but not very much because that's simply not how we construct our data structures. That's not how base business central is working. Uh, there, there's, there's a few mostly used for for uh, data export, for reporting, stuff like that. But but it's it's not, it's very rarely used in, in, in the actual business logic and so on uh, because that's simply not how the application has been made. And, you know, imitation is the greatest type of flattering uh, or whatever it's called. Uh, 
And and so when we create something new, when we create a, a customization, we go look at how something similar has been done in the base application, and then we we imitate. Uh, and uh, that has proven to be a very successful way of doing this. Um, so when stuff like this suddenly show up and say, this is just weird and, and causing a lot of understanding issues and, and this particular implementation is causing a lot of data issues also because it's just, it's just really, really complicated to work on as soon as you want to maintain items across different entities. Um, The last thing I want to, I've already 15 minutes, man, I, I talked too much in this video. Uh, the last thing I want to touch upon, and they just mentioned it briefly b before, is the way that we think about filtering. So, uh, and I actually here, I think, you know, in, in lots of cases, AL folks needs to think a bit, bit more like SQL people, where uh, a SQL, uh, I'm not going to say a SQL guy, let's say a SQL girl would, you know, think about the select statement and the where clause and build up the uh, the, the data selection, execute the, the the select and get the data needed. Where we are kind of more sloppy with filters. Uh, we are kind of sloppy sometimes with, you know, with keys. Um, so to make sure that we get uh, optimal performance on how we're we're getting data, uh, and 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 we could learn more from from adopting that that you know that mindset of of you know we need to get the data even though we're doing on a per table basis and a lot a lot of times in SQL you would do joins and and stuff like that. Uh, this is this is this is. If, if SQL people are looking, when SQL, SQL people are looking at how we do filters, they a lot of them think this is just weird. This is truly weird, um, and and not how they would construct the code. Uh, but but I think we need sometimes also to, to take a look at what we're doing, saying, hey, is this actually the best way of applying these filters and, and, and so on? Anyway, I am going to stop the uh, the bladder here. Uh, blabber, blabber, blabber. I don't know what it's called. Um, and, and just kind of say that yeah, AL is not SQL. There's a, a lot of differences. And one of the... You know, one of the not so secret things about becoming successful in in, in the world of, of business central as a developer is certainly to figure out how stuff is done and imitate that. And don't look at the item attributes. Look at the item attributes as the odd one. Uh, that don't imitate that one. Even though a lot of people say, "Hi, ah, I get that one," but no, don't. Uh, look, look at how documents are working. How look at how um, you know item table, customer table, and all that uh, are constructed, um, and imitate that. Um, that is proven. It's it's understandable from from every everybody else. Uh, and, and it's interesting, um, Henrik uh, recently created a, uh, his new blog, uh, the Double H, uh, maybe I'll see if I can remember to put a link on it, it down below, um, and had a, a great point saying that you should always write code with the intent of somebody else has to read it at some point. You'll not be the last one reading your code. Uh, and in the case of writing AL, trust me, the next person who's going to read your code is probably an AL developer. Uh, so if you write AL in the AL convention, then people can understand it. If you write AL in the SQL convention, then it's harder. Anyway, that's it for this little talk about AL not being SQL. Uh, have a wonderful time. I will see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.